Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Salerno. Welcome again to another edition of DE's Recall Visit, where we look at some of our favorite articles from a recent issue of Dental Economics. Today, I'm joined by our friend, Dr. Greg Winteregg, who just wrote an article on selling dentistry in our March issue. Greg, how you doing? I'm doing great, and I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me, Chris. Oh, it's my pleasure. Your article was really interesting. Our cover story was on uh, Zen and the art of case presentation, and I, I think your theme helps us get very zen about case acceptance. You say, let's just stop being embarrassed and shy about using the word sell with That's case right. presentation. I agree with you, tell me about it. Well, you know, if you just take a broad general business concept, no company exists without the product being sold. And you can go all the way from, you know, a software company has a sales rep that goes into a bigger company and it goes in front of a board and it takes a year, or somebody walks into Starbucks and gets a cup of coffee, both of those products are sold. And it's it's making it too hard to be a dentist to buy into the idea that doctors don't sell, doctors don't talk money, doctors don't handle objections, that's for the staff. And I've had all kinds of consulting and pretty much everybody had the same viewpoint. Doctors don't sell, doctors don't talk money. And it honestly was really holding me back. And what it took is, is a change of viewpoint, which I write about in this article. And it's sort of like uh, we've all been sold by the sales rep that we know is just after the money. They're not answering our questions. They're immediately asking our financial qualifications. And they're just like, we know it's a money grab and we don't like it. The, well, the, and if I can interrupt, we, we run into salesmen outside of the office too, right? We oh, go into a, to buy a car. We go, there's exactly. so many places where we get bad sales techniques yeah. that we then get just annoyed by the whole concept of sales, right? Well, and, and let's just stick with that for a second. So you go and you, you know, the, the used car salesman routine, you know, the, the condominium pitch, you know, the <laughs> timeshare thing is that, well, we don't want to be perceived by our patients to be like that. But then here's what we don't register and connect. We all have sales reps that we love. Like I'm a men's warehouse guy. I'm a not a Hugo Boss guy. And before I go to buy clothes, I call make sure Jason's there because Jason is just going to help me get what I want. And so why don't we just be that representative? And the difference to me of whether we like the rep or we don't like the rep is what is their motivation? So if the motivation is all about them their commission, always be closing, baby. Right. We hate that. We all hate that, right? But if the motivation is simply to help the patient with all the attention on them, all of a sudden it's like there's no pressure. So I'm going to sit down with this person. I'm going to diagnose what it is that they need, and I'm going to talk to them about it. And then, you know, I, I intentionally did not look at whether they had insurance or not what plan they have. Personally, I never participated, so I didn't have the whole reduced fee thing going on. But still, it's like I just intentionally didn't look at that part of the chart. And I just treated every patient like it was my friend or relative, and I'm going to help them keep their teeth for the rest of their life. And that's how I would start out. And so once for me, I just changed my mind that I'm like, like I was worried about my reputation and they might think I'm just after the money and all of that's rolling around over here. Well, still my attention is all on me. But once I just changed, I'm like, you know what? They're either going to get it or they aren't going to get it, but I'm just sitting down and I'm going to lay it all out here and this is what they need. And the price is the price. If it's 3,000, 5,000, 8,000, you know, I'm sorry that they let it go so long, but I'm just going to lay it all out. And then I'm going to ask him, do you want to keep your teeth? People with teeth live longer than people without teeth. I'm here to help you keep your teeth for the rest of your life. And so it was just going like, I want to help you. I want to help you. I want to help you. And all of a sudden, there was no attention on me. I had no worry about, well, what if they say this? Then what do I say? And it's just so it's like, for me, my, my practice literally doubled overnight. And within 90 days, I was up by 75%. When I just had that simple shift of view I quit worrying about me, my reputation. You know, today there's online reviews and all of that, and people worry. And I'm like, oh, we're going to have the office manager talk to them. And listen, the doctor is the most qualified to sell the dentistry. True. So why, why is all the advice out there to remove the doctor out of the sales process? 
because we're afraid of that four letter word S-E-L-L. So for me, it just happened up here. I just changed my mind. I'm like, they're either going to buy it or they aren't, but I'm going to be honest with every person because I really would like for them to keep their teeth and live longer. And I would tell them that. And I was just very sincere and genuine. And all of a sudden it was kind of crazy. People just started buying. Like I say, it was up 75% in 90 days. And that, by the way, was with no marketing, no, nothing. No, that, that was all done on the existing patients that I had been worried about them being upset with me if I just talked to them. Yeah, I, I think part, you, you touch upon in your article too that um, some dentists are hesitant to recommend the best plan. You know, you have right. oftentimes with, with, with people, you have three, four, I mean, you could, you could get crazy with how yeah. many permutations <laughs> of treatment plans that you have. Right. And if it's okay to just say, this is the best option for you, right. or, you know, you often give it the, the mother test, or this is what I would do on my mother. Right. This is what I would do on myself. Exactly. But, but to that, that confidence to look a patient in the eye, yeah. regardless of the financial factors and, 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 and insurance or whatever, and just say, this is what's going to meet your objectives and keep you comfortable and smiling and happy. Exactly. That level of confidence, you want to call that sales, go right ahead. It exactly. probably darn well is. And that's a good thing. Well, and how many times, uh, and I'm sure it's happened to you, it happened to me. So we go ahead and we do the right thing. And we give the patient all these options and they're just completely confused. They're completely overwhelmed and almost out of frustration. They go, well, what would you do? I mean, really, the truth of it is they just want us to make the decision for them. They, yeah. they know they don't have our knowledge. They know they don't have our background and experience. So it's kind of like, well, I don't know. What would you do? And finally that I realized they really just wanted me to tell them the best thing. Okay. Then not everybody wants to spend that much money on the best thing. Are there any other options? Okay. Well then we can back it down from there. But, right. but then it was very clear that now we're into a compromise. So I just started with, this is what's best. It's what I do for you. If you're my mother or my dad or my brother or whatever, this is the best thing. And then we had a a conversation about it and it really wasn't selling. It wasn't like when they say this, then I'm supposed to say this. And then what if they do that? And they're like, then I'm all into the script over here rather than just caring about them and just having a chat. I mean, really, it really is too simple. Yeah. There, and and I, I think that's an important point too. You know, the bad sales techniques that we've seen and we've all witnessed and, and, and to suffer it's, it's the hidden fees or it's the carrot, you know, the, it's, it's the, um, you know, it, it, there's, there's the bait and switch, like there's yeah. this manipulative element to bad sales. And yeah. if you genuinely are going in with just the great intention of, I want you to have the best care possible, right. there's nothing manipulative about that. Well, I know we're limited on time, but I, I want to just kind of end off with this final thought. Cause I had this realization. If I tell the patient they need six crowns, and then I leave the room and they're interested in having the six crowns. I go, okay. And you got the intro photographs, the whole thing, digital x-rays, whatever. And then the office manager comes in and the patient goes, well, how much is it? And then, you know, she says six or $7,000 and they go, oh my gosh, what will my insurance pay? Well, your insurance will only pay two and your copay is going to be this. And so then we decide to do two. Um, doesn't that make look us, us look shady? I mean, wait a minute. The doc was just here and told me I need six. Now the insurance is only going to cover two, so we're going to do two. So what does that say about the whoop? what does it say about the four that we're not doing? Right. 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 So if I recommend six, and then within three minutes we back it down to two because of the insurance. Well, they didn't need the four that we're not doing, and guess what? I don't need the two we are doing, but insurance is paying for it. So what the heck? Right. You know? And then. If you're in a, a reduced fee plan, so then, you know, our usual fee is 1200, but you're only going to have to pay 50% of 700. Does that not tell the patient that everybody who's paying 1200 is getting ripped off? And so what I actually realized is our resistance to looking like a used car salesman and diagnosing what they need and then backing it all down is honestly making us look a, like a used car salesman. And it's worse if you're in a reduced fee plan. So I just kind of like let all of those considerations go. And I told the patient exactly what they needed. And then of course, because of financial reasons or it's not really important to them. Okay. Then we can back it down, but then they're going to understand that we're into a compromise. And if something happens because of their compromise, then I wasn't culpable. Whereas 
if I recommend six and then we only do two and one of the other four breaks and then I'm the bad guy because I did the wrong ones. I mean, we've all played that game and it, it just it's awful. It's awful. And you feel bad and they never remember the conversation that you were recommended six when you go from six to two. Uh, Have you noticed that? <laughs> conveniently. I don't, yeah. I don't remember that. Right. So, so my practice completely transformed when I just took all of my attention off of me and my reputation and what are they going to think and worry about that. It's like, you know what? This is my mom. I'm just going to sit down and tell mom what she needs. And I just started treating everybody like that. And literally the practice doubled overnight. And honestly, within five months, I was so swamped. I needed an associate. It's it like somebody opened up the spigot and man, here came the patients. And the interesting thing, Chris, is, yeah, my new patients did go up. I started doing some more promotion. But patients who had been in the practice for years and said no, all of a sudden were saying yes. So Maybe. it was it all happened over here. We're doing this to ourselves in the profession. I couldn't agree more. It, it, it was a refreshing read. Thank you for that article on, on saying welcome. what I think a lot of us have been thinking for some time. Yeah. Let's not be ashamed of calling it selling, Dennis. Exactly, exactly. Thank you, Dr. Greg Winteregg. Pleasure. We'll, we'll see you on the pages of DE again soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Chris. It was a pleasure. Thanks. My pleasure.